Um, thank you for joining us this evening for this State of Germana presentation. Uh, my name is Tim Sutphin, and I'm joined by uh, Michael Phillips, Ashley Abruzzo, Eric Larson, and President of the Board of Trustees, Keith Hoffman. Um, this not, tonight, we're going to be doing um, some live presentations and some video, and, but we will all be coming back together at the end of the uh, presentation to answer any questions you might have or any thoughts you might have for us. So some folks have, have uh, chosen to speak to you via video, some live, uh, but each has a story to tell about Germana and how it all fits together. Right, right now, just sit back and see what your foundation is up to and how we are stronger together. Uh, my name is Tim Sutphin. As I said, I joined the Germana Foundation in December of 2018 as the executive director. I spent 27 years at Colonial Williamsburg, starting in the late 80s as an instructor for the Colonial Williamsburg Fife and Drums. And I ended my career at Colonial Williamsburg in 2016 as director of special events. So um, I'm really excited to be here this evening. Um, we've been busy at Germana. Wanted to remind everybody of our vision and our mission. So our vision is by 2026, Germana will be a destination and source of knowledge for understanding and appreciating the American frontier experience and the story of migration. Our mission is the fact the Germana Foundation tells America's story through liberty through the frontier experience of her settlers and descendants using archaeological, historical, and genealogical research and interpretation. So what does this mean? We want to illuminate the diverse cultures that met on Virginia's frontier in the early 18th century Virginia Piedmont. We want to tell the stories of the people and place called Germana. We want to create a center for the study of early 18th century Virginia culture and experience as it relates to Germana and its people. We're doing this today through archaeological work of Dr. Eric Larson, through a better understanding of Salubri and its environment, and through the historical and genealogical research of people like you. You are our biggest fans and advocates for what we're doing. You who have dedicated money, energy, and time to Germana, you who are our supporters. Since my arrival, our support base has grown each year. This is good news as it shows growth and interest in Germana as a whole. We need to continue to work, our, work with our supporters and grow that support and fan base. We need to reach new people and keep you, our current supporters, interested in the work we're doing. You are our biggest advocates. So word of mouth is the um, easiest way and the most effective way for people to learn about Germana. As current supporters, you have exclusive access to Germana genealogical database. You receive our eight page Germana newsletter four times a year, and you have river access for canoe and kayak launch at the visitor center. Most importantly, you can be assured in the knowledge that Germana will continue to serve future generations about the trials, challenges, and triumphs, your ancestors and the people who came to this place to live. Germana is continuing to grow and coming out of the pandemic, we are poised to tell our story to more people. We've expanded our public programming. We continue to do more of that year over year, each year. And as we continue to grow, we'll offer more educational opportunities to our supporters and the public alike. We need to thrive as the people of Germana did and tell the story of Germana to Virginia and the nation. It is an important story that everyone should know. This is the first settlement in Virginia above the fall line of the river, German or otherwise. It was the frontier. It was a place of new industry and drew people not only from Germany seeking the chance for a better life, but drew prospectors in iron, which also forced the enslaved to migrate to this place. It's a story of hopes to tell that it, these are the stories we hope to tell if given the chance. Think about it. We would raise $30,000 in additional funds for Germana and put Germana on the road to 
an exciting future. Please, give, please consider giving more to Germana either today or during our annual campaign this fall. You can also give through IRA disbursements, remembering Germana in your will, or establishing an income producing gift plan that benefits of Germana. We have just launched our, our annual challenge that we do each year during the reunion conference. Um, several anonymous donors have stepped forward and from now until July 31st, your gift will be matched one for one up to, to $7,000. Over the two, past two years, you, our supporters, have surpassed that matching challenge, last year raising $21,000 in total gifts. Also want to point out that you need to mark your calendars. On Veterans Day this year, we will be hosting a luminary event at the Visitor Center. On Veterans Day evening, we hope to light a pathway in the Memorial Garden with luminaries in remembrance of veterans who are important to you and the community. Please watch our Facebook page and our website for details on how you can become involved. Finally, I would like to thank you all for supporting the Germana Foundation. It sounds cliche, but without you and your commitment to our mission, Germana would only exist as the couple of lines in an old history book. We are bringing that history alive with your help and it is my honor to lead this organization through the reawakening of the Germana story. We're now gonna hear from um, Ashley Abruzzo, who is our membership manager and volunteer coordinator on um, what sort of things are happening in her, her world. So if you'll give me a moment, I will share my screen and we'll hear from Ashley. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Abruzzo. I'm the Membership Development Manager here at the Germana Foundation. And today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the exciting things that have been happening at Germana. Uh, first and foremost, the number of new memberships that have been rolling in is currently up from this time last year, so that's very exciting. Um, we also have a lot of renewals coming through. If you find that you're not sure if you're an updated member or you need to renew or you're a member at all, um, feel free to give me a call or email me here at Germana. I'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, and if you'd like to gift a membership to someone, we can also do that as well. Uh, in addition to the uh, rate going up with members, I'm happy to say that we're also getting new books into our library. A uh, donor generously allocated some money to set aside for us to uh, get some new books to add to the holdings. And that includes Cavaliers and Pioneers, Abstracts of Virginia Land Patents and Grants, uh, something that a lot of people with Virginia ancestors um, are looking to get to do some really good research. In addition, we have the Index to Virginia Estates. Uh, this one in particular focuses on counties that a lot of our Germanic ancestors would have lived in. Uh, we also have a lot of events going on as of late. Uh, 2020 kind of really put a damper on us to hold any events um, and so the end of June we had our first open house at Salubria, the first one since 2019. I'm happy to say that we had a wonderful turnout, it was a gorgeous day. I actually got to give my very first tour of Salubria uh, with the help of Lita that I kind of worked with her and making sure I had all of my facts and information straight so that was a really exciting time for me. And we've also had a Fort Germana open house uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was a great day too, the rain held off for us, so we were able to host a number of individuals. Uh, some of them were new attendees to Germana, but we also had a lot of repeat customers. We had a lot of families, a lot of children came by, a lot of them were really excited to do their hands-on activities. Lieutenant Governor Spotswood was on hand as well. So we're really excited that we've been able to do more of these events this year. And we have more events coming up throughout the rest of the summer and fall. Uh, we have another open house at the Fort Germana site on Saturday, July 31st and Saturday, September 11th. And we have more events at Salubria as well. So you want to look out for that on our Facebook page as well as our event calendar on germana.org. Um, and you can also sign up to receive our emails and get e-newsletters sent to you um, a few times a month that way you're up to date on the current happenings at Germana. And it's hard to believe that it's already the middle of July. The conference is this weekend. It's very exciting. We're excited to host such a diverse conference. 
Um, we miss seeing all of you. We look forward to seeing you all again in person soon, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the summer. Thank you so much. So thank you, Ashley. Um, really appreciate um, all of the things that Ashley does. If you wish, wish to volunteer, please reach out to Ashley. She can also help coordinate that for you. Um, we're now gonna hear from uh, our new Director of Advancement, Michael Phillips, who's gonna talk to you a little bit about um, what's going on in the world of um, development and advancement. So Michael? Good evening, and it's good to be with you all. Um, my name is Michael Phillips, and as Tim said, I am the new director of advancement coming from coming to you live from the fabulous parlor of Salubria. And you can see the beautiful Doric entablature behind my head here and the, the wonderful paneling of, of this amazing place. So I am, as you can tell, very, very excited to be part of the Germana team um, and to be really working closely with Tim, Ashley, Eric, and the rest um, on expanding Germana's audience, on promoting historic sites like Salubrio, where I am right now, um, and other historic sites that we have, like the Peter Hitt site, um, the Enchanted Castle site, also working to promote all the exciting research we do um, from architectural preservation to specifically archeology, span working with Dr. Larson, on um, all the exciting discoveries that we make um, every day here at Germana. So it's, it's, an, a, very, it's a very exciting time. Um, and my job is really to um, help take Germana's story um, to the nation um, all across Virginia, but all across the nation. We have members from New York to California and uh, we want to keep everyone engaged as well as our, our home audience um, right here um, in Virginia. Um, and so um, one of the uh, bigger things that we've been working on is, um, you know, different groups for our members and new programming, new events, especially as we come out of the pandemic, um, we'll continue to offer um, virtual options for our members that are, that are not close to Germana. But we also would like to, you know, do more in-person events at Salubria and some of our historic sites and really take advantage of the amazing wealth of historic resources that we have. And so um, one of the big things I wanted to do tonight was to um, do a soft launch for a group that we are creating. It's the inaugural Friends of Germana group. And you all are actually the first to hear about this group. So, so I hope you're all excited. Um, about Friends of Germana. And what Friends of Germana is, is basically a group um, that will gain access to special tours, receptions, programs, um, and also um, by joining Friends of Germana, um, you'll get a special acknowledgement in our annual report, and you'll be able to uh, include yourself among the inaugural um, Friends of Germana group. and. And basically in order to join, um, it, it really more than anything just expresses your support and your encouragement and your desire to help this place as far as preservations and programs and research and really um, kind of brings you into the family um, at an even higher level um, than you might currently be as a member. Um, the cost to, to be a friend of German is $1,000 and um, that money will go directly toward um, supporting historic preservations for places like this, for Salubria, um, for archaeology, for programs, both virtual and in person, um, and for um, increased research as we really um, seek to interpret and understand um, our historic sites, um, both above ground and below ground um, at, a, at a higher level. And as we, as we seek to to really interpret these special places and tell the story of Virginia and the story of the nation um, here at Germana. It's, it's a very unique opportunity for us. I think it's a turning point for us to, to really tell that story 
um, at, a, at a higher level um, and really engage more people across the country. So I hope you all will consider joining Friends of Germana. Please call Germana and reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, this is really kind of the first announcement we're making. Um, stay tuned for more details. We will um, send you know more details on programs, full information um, at a later time, and, and you'll be getting more details um, as things come together with the group. Um, but if you if you if you want to join tonight, we'd love to have you as an inaugural member. Um, you can go to Germana slash donate, and um, you'll see some instructions there to be an inaugural member of Friends of Germana. Um, we'd love to have you included in those ranks, and um, we'd be honored for you to, uh, to join us there. Um, and as I said, um, look for, um, in a couple weeks, another email um, with some more specifics on programs and plans for the group. And um, we will um, be in touch with you. Please give us a call if you have questions in the meantime, but hope you'll consider joining and um, really looking forward to um, seeing you all in person in the near future. And, and um, I will leave it at that. So looking forward to hearing from you all and answering any questions you might have um, later on. So thanks and I will turn it back to Tim. Thank you, Michael. Um, that's great. So remember the um, Friends of Germana, um, we will be rolling out more information on that. And um, we're very excited about having Michael join. Uh, he brings a great enthusiasm and excitement to uh, Germana and very supportive of, of our mission and what we're doing. So the next video um, is going to be from uh, Dr. Eric Larson and Kelly Arford Horn, who are our two full-time archeologists. Kelly is the, our research archeologist and Eric is the director of archeology. span um, So without further ado, I'm going to see if I can share this for you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Eric Larson and I'm joined this evening by my colleague, Kelly Arford Horn, a fellow archeologist with the Germana Foundation. And this evening, we'd like to take you on a little bit of a tour of the HIT Archeology span Center. I know our building is not very old, uh, but many of you maybe never had a chance to come visit, or for many of you, so maybe it's been some time since you had a chance to come and visit. Perhaps you were there on our ribbon cutting day with the speeches and fanfare that took place. That was in May of 2019. There was a picture of, wonderful picture of Russell Hitt actually there for the ribbon cutting ceremony. We miss Russell at this point. Or perhaps you were there for the dedication of the time capsule that took place there around the time of reunion. Or perhaps you were there to have a chance to talk to some of our interns and researchers at the site. We had the opportunity to learn a little bit about how the Hit Center will work with the visiting public. And we had a good time learning. However, when the pandemic hit, we had to close our doors. We tried to take that opportunity to explore and build on the hit center. And here are a few things that we've tried on along the way. And here are a couple of bookcases that we've recently acquired here in the lab. As you know, we've just recently completed building this lab. We've been outfitting it for the last little while. Well, a gift from a, a wonderful donor, Anita Nails, has allowed us to purchase bookshelves and many of the various resources, as you can see, a lot of them lined up here. Uh, that archaeologists tend to use on a daily basis. A wonderful thing happened in uh, December of 2019. The University of Mary, Mary Washington and the professor there, Lauren McMillan, chose to turn over the archaeology collections to the Department of Historic Resources, and the Department of Historic Resources chose to turn that over to a long-term loan to the Germana Foundation. And now we have that collection under our roof. All right. So the. The HIT Archaeology Center today may look a little different than the last time you were able to visit. Um, before COVID outbreak and before we did all the online um, conferences that we've done, uh, there wasn't much. We were just beginning to move furniture into this room. Today, we've kind of divided the room into half. Um, we've got one side here with all the, the interns are in working today. You can see this is the workspace. We have sinks for washing. We have tables for cataloging 
computers for, for analysis and study. Um, there's, there's lots going on in this particular area. On the other half of the room is much more sort of public space. And there we have exhibit space. And we also have room where we can spread out and do lecture series, those sorts of things. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit how uh, the, we've given a little more form to the archaeology center than perhaps the last time when you were able to visit. We've spent some time to update our displays and the cases and the artifacts that are in them. Um, Kelly has done a nice job of making this look a nicer bit. Here's a display we had of a punch bowl that former board member Ann Bays donated to the foundation. We've tried to put it into a little larger context of a history of the Knights of the Golden Horseshoe Expedition. We now have a display case in the public section of our lab where we are currently displaying architectural materials from the Mary Washington collection from the Enchanted Castle site. Our goal is to periodically change this display so that we currently have architectural materials from the Enchanted Castle. Um, we may change it out and have um, artifacts that show the Monohoek occupation here. Um, and then at some point, hopefully, we may have artifacts that showcase Fort Germana and the Germana population that was here. Kelly has done a wonderful job of helping us create a discovery zone, a place where kids can go in and handle objects. So I'll let her explain that. A new addition we have here in our lab is our kids' discovery zone. We have a number of artifacts we have found at the site, um, 3D printed here so that kids can pick them up and look at them, examine them. We have some questions to help them think about the artifacts. We have um, some small activities like ceramics, mending. We have some shoes from Salubria. This is a very small start to our kids' discovery zone. Our goal is to expand on this and have more and better activities for kids when they come to visit us in the lab. So all, all these ideas are really just a start. Um, we've gone, come up with a lot of new ideas that we've yet to be able to have time to try. Uh, now that we have the interns working with us, they're bringing also additional ideas. So we have big plans ahead. We hope that the Hit Center will continue to change and develop over time, and you'll enjoy coming and experiencing it with us. But the Hit Center is also a place for research. So I'd also sort of like to highlight a little bit of that potential. And so with that, we're going to turn to our long-term friend and partner, Dr. Bernard Means. So I'm Dr. Bernard K. Means, and I run the Virtual Creation Laboratory at Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, we're entering our 10th year uh, as, as part of the lab. Um, and the lab is a place where um, we do a lot of 3D scanning and a lot of 3D printing. And the, uh, most of the people who do the work are uh, current or recent graduates of Virginia Commonwealth University, um, primarily in the anthropology program. But we do get people from history uh, and also people from the School of the Arts uh, that help us with what we do. Um, and today I'm at the, uh, 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 the HIT Center for Archaeology. And I have been 3D scanning uh, artifacts uh, recovered from the Enchanted Castle excavations a couple of decades ago now. So. so I hope that provides you a little sense about how we use the main room of the HIT Center. Um, again, one side of it for workspace, the other side of it for public interface, uh, a place to have displays and um, show off some of the work that we're doing. So let me now take you into our uh, storage room, uh, which in some ways you could kind of consider a little bit of the heart of the research center here at the HIT Center. Join me if you will. Because the HIT Center of storage was built with storage in mind, um, we've created lots of space for ourselves in our new facility. However, you can kind of see that we've begun with the, the addition of the Mary Washington materials. We've actually begun to fill up our shelving space here, the stuff that we have available. There's plenty of room for us to grow. But as you can see, our collection has grown significantly uh, with the addition of the Mary Washington materials. 
I hope you've enjoyed the chance to explore the Hit Archaeology Center with us tonight. Um, we've been excited over the last year and a half, gosh, for some of you, maybe even two years since you've seen the building. Um, it's exciting to be able to show you some of the progress we've been making. While unfortunately, due to the, the pandemic, we were had to close our doors, but we've been able to really use that time and that opportunity to um, do some more research, to um, gather our collections and bring the Mary Washington materials here um, with the help of Virginia D Department of Historic Resources. We've been able to use those collections to create new exhibits, um, new ways of sort of telling stories of the, the archaeology sites and the people of Germana. Um, so it's been kind of an opportunity, an exciting time for us. Um, we now look forward to the chance to have people come and visit us. Um, we hope that we can open the doors and do, the, do so safely, um, where you can come and visit us and experience firsthand, um, read the displays and learn more about the work that we're, we're doing here and that we continue to do here. Uh, I hope that you're also excited about the potential of um, continuing to keep these uh, opportunities interactive um, and, and chances where people can come in and talk directly to the archaeologists who are working on cataloging or washing artifacts or doing other sorts of analysis. Um, maybe we're, you know, by changing out displays, we'll we have an opportunity to explore more archaeology based stories that, that are coming out of the sites that as we work. Um, these are exciting times and uh, we're really glad for the opportunity to share this with you. Um, we are also going to share about our, our this year's uh, field season, um, and that will happen with an update on Friday. Um, so we hope that everybody can get a chance to join us at that time. Um, until then, or until we get to see each other in person, thank you very much, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your conference. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, we've got one more short video, and then we'll open up for questions. Um, I want to remind everybody that uh, post your questions in the Q&A icon that's at the bottom of your screen. And absolutely, everyone looks like you're using the chat, which is fantastic. So um, this is a, a, the next video is a short message from uh, Keith Hoffman, president of the Board of Trustees. Hello, my name is Keith Hoffman. I am president of the Germana Foundation Board of Trustees. Thank you for participating in our annual conference. I hope this presentation has shown you that good things are happening at Germana. We are growing. We are illuminating the history and stories of frontier settlers at Germana, and we are building a wealth of knowledge that will serve future generations. Please invite your friends and family to join us. If you are not a member, please join us. Volunteer to assist at our visitor center or contact Mark Wheat to see how you can help through the Germana Explorers Project. Consider donating. Your donations help us expand our reach. And consider a legacy gift from your estate. Your legacy gift will benefit future generations. Thank you for joining us this evening. Okay, thank you, Keith. I'm going to now invite um, Ashley, Keith, and Michael, um, to and Eric to come join us, and we'll start opening some questions. So, um, let's see what we've got here. Um, that's. Um, Eric, I believe this is for you. Um, what is that chain that Dr. Means is scanning and it looks as if Kelly has a replica for the, the children's to hand, the child, the kids to handle. There we go. Right, right. Uh, good eye, because that's exactly right. Um, Dr. Means, we found that chain as part of the Mary Washington collection. It was rather fascinating, whereas most chains are just a simple loop link. This one had a really fascinating twist to it. Um, I was kind of fascinated by the craftsmanship or, or trying the efforts somebody can put into making a chain a little more interesting. Um, so we, we kind of gave it to Dr. Means. He scanned it for us. Um, we have a digital copy of that. But then in addition, he, he printed out a length of that chain so that 
we could put it out on the kids' discovery table. We were wondering what kind of chain it may be. Kelly did some more research, and she found, while we thought perhaps with all the work that went into creating it and the specialization in it, that maybe it was some sort of architectural item, she found that it's a pretty, pretty well common um, farm use chain, uh, which by itself is fascinating to, to, to know that a farm, farm use probably in the 19th century um, was, uh, was interested in sort of having, you know, uh, something a little, little more than just a straightforward lake. So that was kind of a fun story that we have. And now kids can pick that up and look at it. And it's even fascinating to think about how we can print a workable chain with the separated links uh, using printer material now. So there's a lot of ways that we can sort of use that chain to talk about new technologies, but also old technologies. So it, that's kind of a fun piece. Okay, Eric, I've got another one for you. Okay. What is the Mary Washington collection? Oh, well, fantastic question there. I'm, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Um, Mary Washington in the mid 80s through 1995 um, held field schools at the Enchanted Castle site. So they dug there like we're digging now for about 10 year period. Um, they ran out of funding uh, to do any continued work there. Um, but the collections remained at the College of Mary Washington, just over nearby us in Fredericksburg. Um, the professor who led that, uh, Dr. Doug Sanford, has since retired. Um, his replacement, Dr. Lauren McMillan, um, could use the space that those collections were taking up for her own work, her own current research. Um, so she kind of made an effort to, to help us or to help transfer that material to DHR, the Department of Historic Resources for the state. And DHR then made a decision that perhaps it would be good for them uh, to uh, send the materials over to Germana so that we could sort of consolidate all the materials under one roof at this time. So I hope that explains what the Mary Washington collection is. We sometimes refer to something like that as a legacy collection. It's, it's materials, artifacts, and records that we as archeologists can go back to and look at and uh, reevaluate and reinterpret. I've got a question for you, Keith. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the planned the the planned giving and IRA disbursements and things like that for a leg for a legacy gift? Um. Yes, guarded sort of advice uh, you should ask any your financial advisor for additional information but if you are a, at an age where you have to take mandatory distributions from your IRA if you make sure that uh, the very first distributions come to us you will be accepted from uh, taxes I believe the limit is something like a hundred up to a hundred thousand dollars a year so that's a wonderful opportunity if you have a great deal of money in your IRA and uh, you have an inclination to make a donation to the Germana Foundation. You can do so and uh, you need not deduct that money through your tax return. You can just uh, make the, essentially you can get the tax deduction without going through, uh, satisfying the standard deduction. Uh, planned giving, uh, that's just a matter of uh, also designating Germana as a beneficiary, and that too is a very simple process. Uh, uh, just contact whomever your administrator is and let them know that uh, Germana is, uh, you intend to donate uh, after, after you're passing um, funds from that account. Uh, it is helpful, however, if you do contact Vanguard and tell, the, tell us about that, because unless we know, uh, we will have, or unless your attorney knows, we will not know that the, uh, the money is, uh, is something that we should uh, uh, contact the um, custodian about. Great. Thank, thank you, Keith. Here's one for you again, Dr. Larson. <laughs> Um, how does Germana get its archaeology interns and what have they done with their time after their internship here at Germana? Well, I know the first part of that question very well. Um, we put an advertisement out in, um, 
several several uh, archaeology job listing sites. Um, in addition, along with um, some of the regional and even national um, organizations uh, that focus on historical archaeology. Um, that's how we put our advertisements out. Um, we then get responses back from literally all over the country. Um, uh, David, this year's, one of Dave, this year's interns is coming to us from California via Northern Michigan University. Um, so we, we get folks from all over. But a lot of them have also kind of come from nearby and even funneling through the field school that we have with uh, VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, we've had several of the field school students apply then for internships afterwards. And, uh, and that's, that's also sort of been a good relationship. And I, I don't know what all of them are doing. I do know that of the 23 interns that we've supported so far, um, 19 are can still working in archaeology or a related field. Very proud of that. Um, uh, several of them, six of them, as of now, have gone on to graduate programs. Two of this year's uh, archaeology interns are on their way to graduate programs already, so that number is going to go up. Um, one in particular story, he started with us on our very first year in 2016, uh, came back the next year as an intern in 2017, he went on to West, uh, West Florida University and got a master's degree um, and still likes archaeology enough that he decided he would enter a PhD program. And he's currently a PhD student at the University of Maryland. So uh, I'm rather proud of, you know, I feel kind of good about that, that people who have come through the program and, and worked with us have been sort of uh, happy enough that uh, they've left, not left the field and some of them are going on to do great things on their own. It's rather exciting too. Yep. Thank you, Eric. Really appreciate that. Um, so somebody's asking if a um, person can specify where the donation for Friends of Germana uh, be applied. Michael, do you want to tackle that or would you like me to, to go after that? Um, I would, I would say um, absolutely. We, uh, and I, I put my cell phone number, I made a gutsy move put my cell phone number in the chat. So um, we, we love to hear your feedback or where, about where your donation would like to go. And um, if you have a specific um, interest, whether it's Salubria or Peter Hitzite or archeology, span um, we'd be happy to work with you to make sure um, that that donation goes to the right place because we really want it to go somewhere that's meaningful um, for you personally. Um, and we have so many different historic resources, so many different areas of research, so many activities um, that there, there is really something that I think anybody can get excited about. So, so absolutely, um, you can specify and um, I'm all ears as far as um, talking to folks about um, where they like their donations to go. And Tim, if you have any, anything else to add to that. No, that, that you covered it perfectly. You covered it perfectly. Thank you, Michael. Um, I guess this one's probably for me. What virtual programs are you planning for the future? Well, that can be for all of us, actually. So um, one of the things we discussed today, um, this afternoon, was a show and tell uh, from Germana Archaeology. Um, this would be a, a, an opportunity for folks to come into the program and um, have some of the artifacts that have either been found this year or in past years or came from the Germana, from the uh, Mary Washington collection and talk a little bit about those and trying to put them in context. Um, so that's one of them or several of them. Uh, we'll also be doing uh, virtual tours and programs on uh, Salubria and um, would like to be able to uh, Tuesday night or last Tuesday night, we did a uh, virtual tour online that we're working on um, on of Salubria. So we'll be doing some updates for that and how that progress is going through the end of the year. Um, anything else you all have have in your brain that you want to oh. share? Yes, I'll Ashley. Go for it. Um, a conversation that I had with Eric probably the other day, we were discussing kind of, you know, entering 2022, um, 2019.
2019, obviously the Archaeology Center was uh, fully created. We started doing an archaeology speaker series in which we had different um, individuals come in talking about different topics related to Germana or themes of Germana. Um, we had initially planned on doing that in 2020 and of course things got sidelined. So we are hoping to do that again in 2022. Now that we have been zoomed out for the past year and a half, um, we hope to potentially do more events there virtually. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi, sometimes uh, it holds, sometimes it's a little questionable, um, but we really want to try to do more virtual um, events for everybody, um, virtual presentations, just because it's always nice to see what is going on in people's areas. Um, you may have viewed some of our five minutes with Germana videos that we put on all of last year. I think we had about 32 of them, um, which was amazing. Um, it took a lot of work. I, I learned a lot in recording about 98% of the videos you saw. I was behind the scenes recording um, everybody talking and um, trying to make sure the, the sound worked and everything turned out well. And I'm hoping to do more of that um, later this year um, with Dennis Loba. I'm hoping to do more uh, with Leto over at Salubria. So we're really kind of exploring different ideas and themes. If anybody out there has any ideas or themes they want to tackle, um, give me uh, an email or shoot me a phone call. Um, I put my email in the chat box. I'll do it again. Um, and then uh, I can start making a list and uh, reach out to folks and see if we can start doing some additional uh, virtual programming. Yeah, and, and I would just uh, echo Ashley's statement and say, I um, really would love to hear from you all um, as to the things that you're interested in. Um, you know, with Germana, you can uh, make so many connections to so many things. And um, some of the things Ashley and I have spoken about are, are these themes um, that relate to Germana, themes like um, Georgian houses, 18th century architecture, like Salubria, um, themes like the history of the Atlantic world and how Germana fits in, not just within the context of Virginia, but within the greater Atlantic world in the 18th century, um, I think is a really interesting topic to really explore and put this into context. And then things like our archeological research and our archeology span lectures and programs are obviously important. And, and then even drilling down into um, specific types of material culture that relate to Germana, things like furniture, um, which is something that's uh, very near and dear to me, uh, decorative arts, um, maps, prints. Um, we have um, you know, a scholar who studies maps and where Germana shows up on, on early maps um, in the Atlantic world and in Virginia. So, so really the sky is the limit with programming and we really um, hope you'll um, give us some feedback about what you'd like to hear and um, and uh, we are pretty confident that we um, can deliver some really great programs and lectures, both virtually and in person um, going forward um, this year and, and next year. So looking forward to it. Okay, thank you. Um, so just to wrap up um, what tonight is, um, is about is that your organization, the Germana Foundation, is in a very healthy state. We're doing a lot of terrific programs. Um, we're reaching out with uh, our virtual programs, which I'm seeing several um, comments about um, hearing about furniture and paint and uh, having some first person uh, interactions, the five minutes with Germana, those. So keep those ideas coming for us. Um, also, you know, uh, to add to what Eric has was saying about the archaeologists and the interns that we have, um, that's really an investment in in America into our past um, by investing into the archaeologists and into the interns. Um, we do have um, sponsorship opportunities for for interns. Um, if you care to to call Michael or myself. We can give you a little bit more detail about that. Um, membership or support support is growing um, very healthily, and we want to hear from you. Um, this is your foundation, and we hope that we're going in the right direction. But it's always good to hear from you about what you want to see and what you want to do, uh, and we'll try to make those things happen. I make no promises, but we will try to make those things happen. 